In the last episode, we boarded the Safari Endeavor and began our journey through Southeast Alaska, where we stopped often to look for bear and kayak along the glass-like oceans. Now the journey continues as I take you to waters full of whales, icebergs, and sea lions as we travel to Glacier Bay National Park and the Inside Passage. Good morning again. It is our fifth day here in Southeast Alaska. Last night we cruised up the icy strait and we are in a place called Fox and Shaw. Today I am going to be heading out on another bushwhack and then this afternoon we're actually going to be moving the ship and heading out on an afternoon skiff tour to a really beautiful place so I'm really looking forward to what wildlife we see today. The area we're walking around in right now is a muskeg up here in the mountains. You might remember from my last trip to Alaska, I actually got to walk on top of a muskeg over by Readout Bay Lodge. So this muskeg is a little bit different because it's not on top of a moving water source. It's just a bog with a lot of peat moss. And you'll notice that a lot of the trees in here are actually dead. That's because the soil in here is actually super acidic so most of these trees can't survive in this kind of environment and they're either already dead or dying but these areas are really important for the ecosystem here and usually stay pretty damp since we are in a rainforest No bird means more to America than the eagle. And on this trip, I certainly saw my fair share of them. And while you're walking around the forest floor, you might stumble upon an eagle feather. But whatever you do, don't take one of these home. Removing them or any other eagle parts is actually punishable by up to one year in jail and a $100,000 fine. Right now we're in a place called the Indian Islands and this place is spectacular. The water is this Caribbean blue. You can see you want to jump right in, but it's a little cold for that. <laughs> the thing that we're here to see are whales and sea lions. And right now we are basically surrounded by whales. It is absolutely beautiful out there. The Indian Islands are the entrance to the Inside Passage. Huge tidal currents surge through these narrow channels, creating nutrient-rich areas that marine species love to feed on. Because of this, things like stellar sea lions, humpback whales, otters, and eagles frequent this area in huge numbers during the summer months. Back on board, it was all about the whales. Humpback whales are certainly one of the symbols of Alaska. The massive marine mammals can grow up to 60 feet long and live 80 to 90 years. They have the longest migration of any animal, swimming up to 5,000 miles from breeding ground to feeding ground. And I just couldn't help myself but to stay up late this night, 
watching them swimming nearby the ship until the sun dipped down below the horizon. Welcome to Nika Bay. There is a negative tide this morning. So we are here exploring the tidal areas and the coastline. There are sea cucumbers, sea stars, urchins, anemones. Let's go see what we can find. So this beach is just covered with sea stars and one of the really cool ones is this sunflower sea star which these guys actually eat other sea stars they can actually run underwater and you don't usually find them here at low tide because they usually run into the water they move pretty quick to escape kind of being out in the sunshine but yeah they're total cannibals sea stars were actually until recently called starfish at least in my recollection but spoiler alert they aren't actually fish so they're now called sea stars. They can actually live up to 35 years old. They have two stomachs and they can even regenerate their own arms. That afternoon, we went out on the water for another paddle, taking in the stunning scenery of Chichikov Island one last time. That evening was all about fun and games, with a few birthday celebrations, including my own, a boat-wide talent show, I'll spare you from hearing our song, and a limbo contest, which I proudly won. out of bed. It's five in the morning and we are just entering Glacier Bay. There are icebergs over to my left. This is the best day of this cruise. largest protected areas, Glacier Bay National Park. More than 3.3 million acres, and it's almost inaccessible. The only way to get here is float plane or ship, which makes it a pretty unique and special place to be. Behind me is Marjorie Glacier. We're here just for a few minutes this morning. This glacier stretches back more than a dozen miles. It's up to 250 feet tall in some places, and about four to seven feet of it comes into the ocean every day. Moments later, as the sun began to warm the ice, we witnessed a huge wall of ice breaking off into the sea.
It's both beautiful and devastating to witness the warming of this icy world, but one all too familiar to those that visit this area. Now I'm at a place called Lamp Plu Glacier. This is actually where I'm going to be getting off the ship and then hiking up a ridge line where we can see some of the glaciers from above. It is an absolutely amazing day today. I just cannot get over this picture perfect weather. The National Park Service only allows two cruise ships to enter Glacier Bay per day. And one of the unique benefits of being on a small ship like ours is that we actually get to disembark the ship and explore some of the glaciers on foot. We are hiking up this ridge with Doug, and I think he's trying to set a new land speed record for getting to the top. <laughs> there is so much lupine up here, and the views over the glacier are incredible. Found all the Alaskan mosquitoes. Now that we've got the polar plunge out of the way, the rest of this afternoon is just cruising through some of Glacier Bay and seeing some of the spectacular scenery. I know I've said it before in this video, but I have just really lucked out with the weather. It has been so beautiful. This is such a special time to be here. Very rare to have this many days of sunshine here at Southeast Alaska, but enjoy the views for the rest of the day because there's really not many places on earth that are like Glacier Bay. Glacier Bay today is the product of the Little Ice Age, which reached its peak around 1750. Since then, the massive glacier that once filled the bay has retreated more than 65 miles to the heads of the inlets. The rest of the day was spent with cameras and binoculars at the ready. But before I joined the rest of the guests on the bow, I wanted to see what the view was like from the bridge. We are in the captain's lounge. This is our amazing Captain John. Can you tell me your favorite experience that you've had in the last with it, man? I think just getting close to the, uh, to the glaciers and I mean, this morning having Marjorie cab right in front of us and seeing the waves come down around. That was, that was pretty spectacular. And where are we on the map here? Yeah, so we are coming right back over Lamp Poo, so we're right on about where the 196 uh, is, and we're heading over this way. So we're gonna head through here. We're gonna cut back over, make our way around past Reed Glacier and south in the park. So we're a little, we're not quite on this section of the map yet, but what we will be doing is more working our way down throughout the park and exiting later on tonight. And we'll stop some cool spots along the way. And when I say stop, I mean kind of like we'll deviate course and check them out. Kind of like what we did earlier. Yeah.
continuing our slow departure from the inside passage, all of the guests spent time watching for wildlife. Bird watchers were delighted by the species like puffin and cormorant, and all on board looked wide-eyed at the rock walls of the fjords as we passed large species like sleeping bear and mountain goats. The end of the passageway took us by the sea lion rookeries with hundreds of stellar sea lions and a few more feeding whales as we finally bid adieu to our last night on board. This is the last sunset aboard this amazing week-long cruise. And this has just been so incredible. I have had the best time. Not only have I had some of the best weather you could ever have here in Southeast Alaska, but the crew on this ship was just fantastic. Wildlife was spectacular the scenery, the landscapes, the activities. I just loved all of it so much. And if you guys are new to this channel, just watching this, looking for ways to discover Southeast Alaska, definitely check out UnCruise because it is such a fantastic combination of small ship cruising and adventure travel. You are really able to go into places that you would never experience on other cruise lines. And if you're not a cruise person, well, hey, guess what? No one aboard this ship is a cruise person, which is why we're all here, because we love adventure. We love getting off into the wilderness and seeing wildlife, seeing things up close. And that's exactly the kind of experience you get aboard this ship. The other thing that's great about UnCruise, and sorry because the boat is rocking a lot right now, is that it is a lot more sustainable than a big cruise ship because we are smaller, we use less resources. They've also been fantastic about portion sizes in the kitchen and the amount of waste that is created here on board. So it's just a lot more ecological. There's also a lot of charities they support and local community organizations here in Alaska that UnCruise supports. So highly recommend. I'll drop a link down below so you guys can check out some of the itineraries that UnCruise offers. But if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and drop a comment down below. I will see you guys on another adventure very soon. As always, I'm Alice Ford. Never stop exploring.